I want to say um, thanks to all of you for being here and, and uh, um, an appropriate week for us. We, we've been focused on this week uh, for some time uh, as Veterans Day approaches and, and, and some of the events, Eddie, that we were going to be uh, working on. Obviously, we're veteran-related as we honor the men and women who serve uh, our armed forces and, and uh, um, and just reflecting back on the tremendous sacrifices that uh, um, have been given to those of us who enjoy freedom uh, every day. You know, Texas is proudly home to 18 uh, U.S. military installations. Um, we have long respected and valued the contribution that the men and women who wear our uniform, uh, and I might add, their families, uh, that they all collectively make for our state. You know, while Texas and the rest of the nation continue to struggle with the senseless shooting at Fort Hood last Thursday, um, you know, we, we seek answers, we ask why often, um, and again, we are reminded of the debt we owe to the veterans of this country. And I suspect it'll be a while before we know for certain what motivated uh, a member of the U.S. military to turn a weapon on uh, his fellow soldiers. And it'll probably be even longer before the Fort Hood community returns to a sense of equilibrium in their daily lives. However, the stress of those events adds yet another layer to the pressure that the military family uh, endures. As the frequency and the, the du duration of, of these deployments uh, increase, the combat operations continue, uh, military members and their families walk a rough road every day. And I'm here to mark uh, the commencement of a number of initiatives designed to assist our military community uh, that these members of the legislature, uh, this 81st session of the legislature, uh, enacted uh, in the early part of, of this year. Uh, and we're also here to announce that we're working with the members of the legislature uh, to declare an additional $5 million to mental health treatment for veterans and their families. The relationship between Texas and the U.S. military stretches back to um, the establishment of this state. I mean, you think about the relationship that Texas has had uh, with the United States military and throughout our history, Texas has played a very prominent role as a host to military installations. We've sent our sons and daughters to serve in the defense of our country. In the course of that long-standing relationship, Texans have learned firsthand of the challenges uh, the military warrior faces. And, <laughs> you know, Colonel, it goes past just the rigors of going to boot camp. Uh, it, it, it lingers well past an individual's time in a combat zone. You know, whether they carry a visible wound or it's one that lies a little deeper. Our veterans deserve our best effort to support them as they re-enter the communities that they risk all in the support of. We must make sure that our veterans return from the field of battle to live a life of dignity with access to the services they were promised when they raised their right hand to uphold the Constitution and laws of the United States. Unfortunately, when it comes to mental health, our service members have several challenges to overcome. Some not only deal with the realities of post-traumatic stress syndrome 
or traumatic brain injury. They also must contend with an unfortunate stigma within the warrior culture that portrays asking for help as a sign of weakness. Here in Texas, we're undertaking to help our returning service members in a number of ways. Uh, first, we're expanding mental health treatment for veterans by making that $5 million worth of state grant funding available to local mental health authorities. And I want to thank Lieutenant Governor Dewhurst. You will probably see him tomorrow as we're together again. And um, we want to say thanks to him, to uh, Speaker Strauss, as um, they have collectively made these dollars available along with the members of the legislature who are represented here. Um, these new funds will help expand existing programs and they'll improve a number of initiatives uh, that were approved during this last session of the legislature. And those include establishing at least one peer-to-peer -peer support program in each of our state's 39 local mental health authority regions. This vet-to-vet -vet approach reduces the impact on the warrior's aversion to seeking help from fellow vets who are not only willing to help, but are also trained in uh, that uh, uh, critical area. Um, I want to say thank you to Senator Jane Nelson. Jane's not with us here today, uh, but she was very involved with uh, this legislation along with Representative Frank Court. Um, they helped shepherd through, and along with assistance of these other uh, members of the legislature, Senate Bill 1325. It was the vet to vet program. And, uh, you know, I hope someday soon VFWs and American Legions uh, all across the state will have their own vet to vet teams and displaying that esprit de corps uh, that makes our armed forces so effective and our veterans' community so close knit. Another priority is to recruit and train practitioners to provide additional mental health support for our veterans. And uh, Barbara, right over here, has been so kind to, to come today. Uh, Barbara Van Dalen lives in Washington, D.C., but her heart is in uh, the 50 other states. Uh, I know that. And, um, and I'm really excited to uh, be here with her today. Um, the Give an Hour program uh, is going to be expanded into key areas uh, in our state over the next year. Uh, the Texas Veterans Commission is very uh, engaged with her and, and her association, Department of State Health Services, who you'll hear from uh, shortly. All have looked at this program, and, and we think it has extraordinary potential. Um, it, it, uh, it is donated... I think in excess of 17,000 mental health hours uh, with um, their counseling. I, and, and Barbara, again, I want to say thank you for being here today and for um, active duty personnel and, and, and veterans and their families all across this country. Thank you uh, for the work that you've done and what you will do. We need more of that in Texas, and, um, and, and that's why we're investing uh, in, in these programs and, and making, um, making the resources available uh, to make this happen. Uh, we're also expanding um, programs to support veterans' families, uh, and, and that is uh, um, as, as they make the transition from um, military to civilian life. Uh, th these new family education support programs are going to be modeled on a nationally known uh, program such as Operation Enduring Families, uh, the SAFE program, S-A-F-E program. Um, finally, we're going to upgrade the TexVet website uh, and uh, to let veterans know that uh, these 
resources are going to be available to them. And um, th this, this is our, our, our state's effort. It's a portal, one-stop shop, if you will, uh, to help them find what they need, dealing with after effects of their service. Uh, but ultimately, getting them to that uh, uh, highly preferred uh, place of, of living a very rewarding and productive life fully integrated into our communities. Um, Texas is really honored to be able to support the men and women who wear our uniform in this way. Um, and um, we're humbled to be standing with some of them today, our veterans and our active duty personnel.